Let's discuss a critical and often overlooked aspect of prostate cancer treatment, treatment of emergent small cell neuroendocrine prostate cancer, or TSCNC. This topic is crucial for anyone affected by prostate cancer, whether you're a patient, a caregiver, or simply seeking to understand more about this disease. Imagine this scenario. You're undergoing treatment for prostate cancer and everything seems to be going well. Your PSA levels are normal, bone scans are clear, and all signs point to remission. But then suddenly, you're hit with severe back pain. Initially, you might think it's just a pulled muscle, but what if it's something much more serious? What if it's a sign of a rare and aggressive form of prostate cancer called TSCNC? Unfortunately, this is a reality that some people face. TSCNC is a particularly challenging type of prostate cancer because it behaves very differently from the more common form, adenocarcinoma. Most prostate cancers start as adenocarcinoma and are fueled by androgens, male hormones, and many treatments focus on blocking these hormones. However, TSCNC doesn't rely on androgens. Instead, it emerges after treatment with hormone therapies like abiraterone or enzalutamide. It's almost as if the cancer outsmarts the treatment, transforming into something entirely different. So how can you know if they have developed TSCNC? Traditional tests like PSA levels and bone scans may not be reliable indicators. Often, TSCNC is diagnosed when someone who initially responded well to hormone therapy suddenly develops resistance. Despite low PSA levels, the cancer might start spreading aggressively. This sudden change can be terrifying for patients who believe they're in remission. The most definitive way to diagnose TSCNC is through a biopsy. Under a microscope, TSCNC cells appear smaller and more crowded together than adenocarcinoma cells. However, diagnosing TSCNC is complicated because it frequently spreads to the bones, making bone biopsies tricky and delaying diagnosis and treatment. Consider a case study of a 60-year-old man initially diagnosed with prostate cancer. He was treated with abiraterone and enzalutamide, achieving remission with normal PSA levels and clear bones. But just two months later, he began experiencing severe back pain. An MRI revealed multiple lesions throughout his spine, and a biopsy confirmed the presence of TSCNC. This case underscores the importance of vigilance and advocating for oneself, even when traditional markers appear reassuring. When diagnosed with TSCNC, treatment options differ significantly from those for adenocarcinoma. Since TSCNC isn't driven by androgens, typical hormone therapies are ineffective. The mainstay of treatment for TSCNC is chemotherapy, using regimens similar to those employed for small cell lung cancer. Drugs like etoposide and platinum-based agents are commonly used to disrupt cancer cell reproduction and slow tumor growth. However, the effectiveness of chemotherapy for TSCNC is often limited, with a five-year survival rate of only about 14% compared to higher rates for adenocarcinoma. This stark difference highlights the aggressive nature of TSCNC and its poorer prognosis. Despite these challenges, there is hope. One promising area involves studying the genetic differences between TSCNC and adenocarcinoma to identify potential drug targets. Another exciting avenue is the investigation of master regulator proteins, those that act like control panels for cancer growth. By developing drugs that target these master regulators, we could potentially shut down tumor growth more effectively. Living with TSCNC also presents unique emotional and psychological challenges. The aggressive nature of this cancer and the limited treatment options can lead to significant fear, anxiety, and grief. Patients often grapple with uncertainty about the future, the progression of the disease, and the impact of treatment on their lives. Understanding the differences between TSCNC and adenocarcinoma, advocating for oneself, participating in clinical trials, and utilizing supportive resources are all essential for those affected by this disease. 
Nonprofit patient advocacy organizations like MailCare are vital in driving this progress. Their commitment to funding research and fostering global collaboration has been instrumental in advancing these treatments. MailCare exemplifies this collective effort to conquer prostate cancer through innovation and shared knowledge. Thank you for joining us in this discussion. If you found this informative, please give it a thumbs up, click on the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss our future updates. Stay informed, stay hopeful, and take care.